Hey, hey, what's the big idea? Turn that thing off. Just trying to shed a little light on the subject. Subject? What subject? You, of course, and all that stuff you're carrying. My stuff? What about it? Kind of heavy, isn't it? Yeah. You can say that. Where are you going with it? Going? Nowhere. I can see that. Forget it. I'm out of here. Okay. I can wait. Just thought maybe I could help. Help? Yeah. I'm listening. To start with, why don't you put that down? What? Put it down, your stuff. Put it down? Oh, no, I can't do that. This is my stuff. Mine. Where'd you get it? Uh, I've collected it over the years. Some people collect stamps. I collect stuff. stuff. I know. You enjoy carrying all that? Because you don't look like you enjoy it. Enjoy it? Well, no. What's to enjoy? It's very heavy. <laughs> I can see that. But we have to carry our own stuff. Show me what you have. Don't be silly, man. I've never shown anybody what's in here. Really? And how's that been working out for you? Here, put it on this. Whoa, whoa. Show me. It'll just be between you and me. Well, okay. What's that? <sighs> That's when Mike stole my girlfriend back in eighth grade. Mike? Yeah, my brother Mike. Oh, must have been tough. It's very tough. I'll never forgive him for that. I know. What else is in there? This was when my dad missed the game. I hit that big home run. I won the game. He was supposed to be there. But instead, he was stuck in the office. That was the only home run I hit that season. I'll never get over that. Yeah, but he was there for that triple back in 72, wasn't he? Sure. What's the point? Oh, nothing. Oh, and this, this was when my wife accused me of being like my brother, Mike. I didn't speak to her for two weeks. Wow. Did she ever forgive you for that? Forgive me? What for? Never mind. What's that big one in there? Uh, uh that's, that's nothing. Pretty big nothing. So, who hurt you that bad? This is about three years ago. I met her at this convention. And, uh, well, let's just say a few mistakes were made. And another. And a few after that. She really hurt you? She? No. Me. I hurt me. My wife, my family, everyone I care for. They all know? They don't have to know to be hurt by it. Yeah. It's been one train wreck after the other since then. So you're just going to keep carrying those things around? Yeah. Can't leave it here. It's me. No, they're not you. They were you. Now they're just things you can't do anything about. Except one thing, of course. What's that? Leave them. I know what you're getting at. I'm not stupid, you know. I know. You're trying to get me to forgive. But they don't deserve my forgiveness. They don't deserve? Well, I mean, I don't deserve. Now we're getting somewhere. Are you saying that if I forgive myself, I can forgive everyone else? There you go. You just leave it right here. But, uh... It's okay. Just give it a try. You think? I know.
How's that feel? Not bad. Not bad at all. Go ahead. You've got better things to do. Hey. Yeah. Thanks. That's what I'm here for. Today we're talking about forgiveness, or actually the lack of forgiveness. The failure to forgive is not only tremendously destructive, but it's insidious. We may not even realize that it's happening. Today our first guest is Dr. Dan Allender. He's the author of numerous books. Currently, Dan serves as professor of counseling at Mars Hill Graduate School in Seattle, Washington. Welcome to Lifestyle Magazine's Mad About Marriage. Thank Welcome. you, Mike. Thank you, Gail. We are very glad to have you here. Thank you. It's going to be a good topic. It is indeed. So let, let's talk a little bit about forgiveness. Why is forgiveness so difficult to, to have in marriages? Well, it, it, in one sense, you have to say that forgiveness is the very hardest part of what it means to love. You really can't love unless you have a heart to forgive. But the very nature of forgiveness means that I'm literally willing to receive back into my heart and into my arms the very one who hurt me. Oh, yeah. That very difficult task of letting your heart be open again to the one who hurt you, uh, I just don't know if there's a harder thing in the world to do. Yeah. No, well, it seems deal. to me to be magnified by the fact of, of, of marriage itself. That seems to magnify our sins against one another, doesn't it? Well, it just almost seems to be a hotbed for sin. Yeah. In fact, I think it's really one of God's purposes to create a context where you have a mirror making known in many ways pretty much daily uh, mm -hmm. how far you fall from really the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And yet on the other hand, it's the very context to give you the sweetest taste of what heaven holds. So it's, it, it may sound immediately contradictory. It's really a taste, as tragic as this word is, of hell. Hmm. But it's also the sweetest taste of heaven you'll know before you actually enter into mm -hmm. glory. Yeah. Oh. The truth is, there's not one of us who can live our lives in a marriage without hurting someone. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to hurt someone, either you've got to end the relationship or you've got to find a way to have forgiveness, mm -hmm. to be forgiven, to give forgiveness. But that is very hard, and I think sometimes that has to do with our expectations from each other and what we're supposed to get from this relationship, don't you? I do. I, I think most of us don't really enter into marriage with these two core convictions. It is the context to learn how to suffer. Uh, oh, say that again? It, it's the context to learn how to suffer. Yeah, wow. I bet most brides going to the altar don't think about that. And, and certainly yeah. most preachers uh, don't really invite that couple yeah. Uh, yeah. into the reality yeah. that this will be a taste for you of the kind of pain like you will not know anywhere else on any other relationship in the same way. Wow. But Whoa. if we understood that, that that's part of God's plan to unearth mm -hmm. something of that mess within us, mm -hmm. but then to return it to, it is the context for you to have the sweetest notions of the love of God. Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. then I think we'd be in a better position to say, w we need to talk about we don't do forgiveness well. Yeah. How do we begin to grow together? Yeah. Yeah. And those two things, suffering and the love of God, is amazing how often they go hand in hand. That's when we begin to recognize His love, isn't it? Yeah, I do believe. It's only from that matrix of suffering. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's difficult to experience any of this if we haven't learned to receive the forgiveness of God, mm -hmm. to forgive others. Mm -hmm. But what a blessing when we do it. It, it changes your life. It changes mine. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll continue our discussion in just a moment. Joining us now is Dr. Tremper Longman. He's the Professor of Biblical Studies at Westmont College in Santa Barbara, California. And we are very happy to have you with us today. Thanks, Gail. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we're talking about the topic of forgiveness. And we'd like, we'd like to know if you could share with us a little bit about what is the divine model? Is there a divine model for forgiveness? Well, first of all, you know, the Bible makes it abundantly clear that all human beings are sinners. You know, mm -hmm. we're all self-centered, we're hurting each other, and most of all, we hurt God himself. We rebel against yeah. God yeah. in our sin. 
But as you read through Scripture, I mean, from Genesis 3, when the first sin takes place, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the way to the end, God nonetheless can respond to his sinful people with an abundance of grace. I mean, I just think of Genesis 3, you know, where where Adam and Eve sinned Mm -hmm. against God. And, and indeed, and this is an important thing, he rebuked them, he judged them. Yeah, and, sure. uh, but in the context of that judgment, he showed his continuing involvement with them by, ex- first of all, continuing to let them live and then pursuing them with his grace. And that's sing- signaled in Genesis 3 by him giving them clothing to wear. That's a token mm-hmm. of grace. It's a token of really? grace. Yeah, uh-huh. and, and all through scripture you can see this pattern. Mm-hmm. Well, he also announced there that he was not going to let this stand either, you know. Right, right, the, right. So there's the, the announcement of the promise that eventually this will be restored, even exactly. there in Genesis chapter Genesis 3, 3, isn't 15, it? Genesis 3.15, right. As he, as he tells the, the devil himself, I'm going to crush your head for what exactly. you've done here. Exactly, <laughs> And the clothes really are an image of covering shame. You know, you have the end of Genesis 2 where it says, and they were naked and they knew no shame. shame. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. sin virtually always creates this division because of shame. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, forgiveness becomes a new clothing. It becomes a really a new way of covering the other, though they feel shame because of their failure, or at least they ought to feel shame Mm -hmm. because of the failure. What a wonderful picture. Uh, When someone has wronged me, I have the opportunity by God's grace to provide clothing for the, the mm. nakedness of their mm. sin yeah. because I, I choose to cover you with this mantle of forgiveness, the same that has been shared with me. Yeah. Just that I phrase, c- love covers. Yeah, yeah. A what a beautiful right. picture. Right. Yeah. Well, let's fast forward a little bit to the cross. <laughs> yes, right. All right. Now, what, what do we learn from the cross about this? Well, this is the ultimate expression, of course, of God's token of grace. Um, Jesus Christ died for our sins, yes. though we sinned against him. He took them upon himself, and he, he died in order to save us from our sins and the guilt that's associated and with that. And, you know, that. it says while we were yet yes, sinners. Yes, right. That's exactly right. While yeah. we're still wronging him, right. he's in right. the process of forgiving us. Right, yeah. right. Wow. That is an incredible thing. I mean, for me to say to someone, uh, I forgive you is one thing, but when they're still hitting me, yeah, exactly. yeah. still hurting me, exactly. I forgive. No, I, I really do. I still forgive you. Yeah. I forgive yeah. you even now. Uh, that is an incredible thought. I, I don't know that I can do that when you're beating me up. Yeah, it's but very it's, difficult. But essentially, that's what God has done through the cross. While we were yet at enmity against Him, when we were yet sinners, that's when Christ died for us and forgave us. All right, right. So in this context of marriage, yes. can we do that? I mean, we're, you know, if we're in the midst of being wronged? Well, that's an interesting question, both psychologically and theologically. <laughs> yeah. uh, but let me draw your attention to Luke 17, which talks about how when you're sinned against, and we can apply it's true of all relationships, sure. but we could talk Any about it about mm-hmm. marriage as well. When you're sinned against, you know, you should rebuke the person. Mm -hmm. Uh, You should draw that sin to their attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, do it, as it says in Matthew 7, recognizing that you have a log in your eye. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and going in humbly and and seeking reconciliation. And then when you rebuke them, uh, you hopefully will get a repentance. Yeah. You know, because it's not just forgiving, it's also uh, as Luke 17 points out, yeah. forgiveness is based on repentance. Yes, it is. And so it says in that context we should forgive seven times in Matthew 18, mm-hmm. 70 times seven. Yes. Uh-huh. But it's always contingent on repentance. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we have to take that into account yeah. as well. That, that word rebuke, I think, is a word that, oh, yeah. that carries a different connotation yeah. uh, in today's uh, the listener, right. right? Yeah, and it's so kind of an obsolete word. It, it is, but basically what it means is I just simply tell you, I, I don't know if you know, Trimper, but what you did hurt me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's exactly. basically what we're talking about here. If that's a rebuke, Right. Then, then, right. then so be it. But that's essentially what we're doing. We're going in love to someone and saying, you may not be aware of this. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe yeah. you are aware. Yeah. I'm going to assume you weren't, but what you have done has harmed me. And that is really the essence of, of the, quote, rebuke that we're talking so about. So it's not, here, is it not rebuke in the sense of 
Shame on you. Yeah, did kind exactly. Of thing. There's more that I wanted to ask during this segment, but uh, I think we're about out of time for this segment. Maybe we can get to it next segment. I want to talk about the price of not forgiving, mm-hmm. uh, what that does to us. And we'll get to that in just about two minutes. Hang in there. We'll be back. We're talking about forgiveness today, and it's cost when we don't forgive in marriage. We mentioned something earlier about um, forgiveness being dependent upon repentance. Is it possible to forgive when someone does not repent? Yes, I I think it is possible, drawing on, you know, the power of God, because Mm -hmm. everything in us, we don't want to forgive in those instances. However, I, I also think that we shouldn't think that we have to forgive somebody who doesn't repent. Uh, I, 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 and let me give you a, a, and maybe Dan has a different opinion about this, but, mm-hmm. but I think, let's say in a case of repeated uh, spousal abuse, mm-hmm. um, when somebody repeatedly and without repentance, or even repents and just goes back to the same pattern, right. mm-hmm. uh, keeps abusing their spouse, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I think it's probably even wise to withhold a kind of forgiveness to that person, blessing that person with forgiveness, because they'll just keep... Can't we, we still forgive and yet remove ourselves from harm's way? In, in one sense, it's almost like saying forgiveness is a heart that wishes well for the other. Yes. And, mm. But there are times where I think in the Christian community, forgiveness means to be reconciled. And mm-hmm. you have to separate those terms. That's not yes. always true. Reconciliation only occurs when there has been true repentance. That's right. There can be a heart that basically receives the other, but receives meaning, I'll open my heart to you, but if there has been repeated violations of a significant sort, then forgiveness doesn't mean re-entry to let that mm-hmm. harm I think that's continue. a key. Yeah. I can still forgive you. Also, if I'm dependent upon your repentance for mm-hmm. me to forgive, I have to carry this burden of resentment. Right. That's, that's right. right. I don't want to do right. that. That's right. Because yeah. you're still abusing me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I'm carrying that burden. So I've got to let that go, but I may remove myself from harm's way here. Now, we had also talked before before the break about what is the cost of failure to forgive. Mm -hmm. Well, relationally, we know that it creates amazing distance between people. But we also know from research that the body is fundamentally in fragmentation over years of a lack of forgiveness. Cancers, uh, other disease processes, just put it in a broad sense. You know when you've got that rancor, bitterness inside of you, it begins to tear you apart. Literally, your stomach is in Mm. knots. Mm. Well, over a season of time, it will destroy something of the integrity even of your own body. So a failure to forgive destroys us. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't hurt the other person, does it? Well, it certainly keeps us from being able to love, and there is some harm in that regard. But we certainly are the ones who are bearing way more of the damage. So we're not only victimized, but then we end up victimizing ourselves because Mm -hmm. we don't see that the glory of God in forgiveness is freedom for ourselves and truly freedom for the other. We can perpetuate the damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by hanging on to that the the ugliness. That's right. So so how do we get there? Mm-hmm. How do we forgive? Mm-hmm. Well, it's to me it's such a simple beginning point. Are you aware of how deeply God has forgiven you? Mm-hmm. So in that sense, how ought it to say that? Do you really understand yourself to be a sinner? And how do you define sin? Yeah. Do you really see sin oh. to be the issue of adultery mm-hmm. and murder? That you really are a person who struggles with anger and lust. If mm-hmm. so, then the scriptures are, are so, in one sense, harsh. Mm-hmm. I'm a they murderer, yeah. and I'm an adulterer, and I have been invited to dance with the living God. Yeah, now you figure that one out. <laughs> so for me to out. forgive Mike for something, the first thing I have to do is realize that I'm a sinner. That's right. I have to look at myself first. And then I can forgive. I I think that beginning point of going, I'm hurt, I'm angry, I'm confused. I know there's a brokenness between us. But rather than making the move to deal with Mike, I think you have to start dealing with Gail. Wow. And and by doing that, I think you can do that sometimes very briefly, 
simply saying, Lord, I'm hurt and I know mm-hmm. I'm a murderer. I know that I struggle with lust. So you've got to begin working in me now wow. mm-hmm. to begin that mm-hmm. process. This forgiveness is not naturally within me. No. no. It's going to have to come from you. We're talking about a supernatural act here, aren't mm-hmm. we? We certainly are. Yeah. And, and if we understand then that it's also a process. We're mm-hmm. not talking about um, you found out that your husband's involved with pornography or, or uh, yeah. committed an adulterous relationship. It, the idea that the forgiveness is going to be something you can make happen within a short period of time yes. is just utter foolishness. It is foolish. And that is huge because people don't realize that. Mm. They think they're required to forgive no. like that. But it we work happen. through the process, and there is a process that will heal. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll be back with a final word right after this. We want to close our discussion today on forgiveness with just some final thoughts. Could you give us a final thought on forgiveness, what you would say to couples? Well, what I would say to couples is that we are sinners, that forgiveness is not just talking about the big offenses, but it's really a daily thing, that forgiveness mm-hmm. and repentance are are part of the daily Christian walk. And that's how we mature as Christians, and that's perhaps also how we get ready for the big crises in our marriage. Never let it build up. Right. Ongoing. It's not a burden. Uh, It's one of the greatest pleasures that we can possibly know. It's in many ways not an ordinary meal. Uh, It really is Thanksgiving. So if we see forgiveness as the great gift we give to one another, it's something we ask God to help us grow in. Thank you so much. These gentlemen have written a series of seven Bible studies. One of them is entitled Forgiveness. We encourage you to look for it and get all seven of them. Thank you for being here with us this week. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, you take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Sometimes it's really hard to forgive. If you would like help in learning how to do it, call us today and ask for the book Mad About Marriage. Call 888-940-0062 and ask for Mad About Marriage or go to our website at lifestyle.org. That's lifestyle.org.